A woman's journey to locate her biological parents leads to a terrifying discovery. Back in 1957, Kathy Gilchrist was put up for adoption as an infant. 60 years later, she decided to begin the search to locate her biological family. What she didn't know is that her journey would lead her to the FBI's most wanted list. The Kathy Gilchrist is with us this morning with more on her story. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. I mean, is this a, uh, an issue of be careful what you you wish for or, or, or look for? Absolutely. I mean, as much of a cliche as that sounds, um, there's a little warning there to to other people. So um, how do you cope I, with that psychologically to say I'm, I'm, you, you maybe you, you're expecting this uh, wonderful, warm story and it ends like this with you with well, your you father? Know, um, honestly, um, I, I I wrote a book about how the um, there is such a difference between nature and nurture. I was nurtured by wonderful, wonderful, salt of the earth, um, humble, modest parents. And so I it took me 60 years to actually search for who my parents were. Um, there was a little voice in the back of my mind telling me, Mm, you know, be careful what you look for. You don't hear about the, the bad stories. Um, well, and, Kathy, uh, for people who don't know the story, tell us who your biological father is and why he is on the FBI's most wanted list. I will be happy to. My, uh, my birth father appears to be William Bradford Bishop, who has been wanted for 45 years by the FBI. He um, worked for the United States government, and he uh, one day went home from work and um, bludgeoned his, his wife, not my birth mother, his wife, his three sons, who would be my brothers, and his mother to death. Wow. Then he took their bodies, buried them in North Carolina, set them on fire, and um, escaped to the Smoky Mountains, where he has never been heard from since. Wow. As we can see on that map, this happened in Maryland, and in terms of a motive, he was in psychiatric care, was he not? He was. He um, when I when I researched him, I found uh, so many parallels between us, um, and one that he suffered from anxiety and depression, which is fairly common right now. I I seem to have exactly the same um, symptoms, but fortunately for me, there is no stigma attached to that. Um, but for him in the 70s to have to face that was difficult. Um, perhaps that is part of the story. Perhaps he um, apparently was very, very happy living in Europe uh, in diplomatic service until he was transferred back to the United States. Perhaps he was just frustrated living there. Um, he did not share many of his inner thoughts or his social life with uh, with friends or neighbors so the mystery is still there so he would be is it he would be 84 now and is it your he would be it would are you thinking since he had this he had a degree from yale he spoke mm -hmm. languages you're thinking he's in europe somewhere if he's still alive is that what they're telling you at the fbi well, the FBI is not really telling me anything. They, yeah. um, you know, they, they, they don't. They, we're not sharing information. I did call and inform them when, you know, when all the, um, when the information came through. But uh, it seems logical to me. He has the cognitive abilities. He has the resources. Uh, there have been reported sightings of him in Europe by former uh, colleagues that he knew when he was younger, but none of them have been substantiated. He's a smart guy. He, so, I know so, how his mind works. Kathy, um, real quick, is your big picture goal here to find him and see him be brought to justice or is it some kind of psychological understanding you're you're pursuing or maybe neither of those actually things? um really as i said i wrote a book it's called it's in my genes and it was more about my search and about people's identity how there is no question that a person inherits genetic qualities. Um, I was very different from the from the family who adopted me. Um, however, their nurturance, their, mm. their strong nurturance, caused me to use my characteristics um, in a positive way 
I have no homicidal tendencies. So do I want to meet Brad Bishop? No, um, hmm. <laughs> obviously not. Um, but it would be, there are so many people involved and, and a lot of them have come, have come forward to me recently uh, and they want to see justice done. Yeah. Uh, this was well, a heinous crime. Well, well, Kathy, well, thank you for joining us. So you can read more of Kathy's story in her new book. It's In My Genes, now available on Amazon. Thank Fascinating you, story, Kathy. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you.